All right, for the copper in brass lab, you're going to have to get out these computers and find what is a Logger Pro icon. When you pick that, if it's hooked up correctly, it will read the device that it's hooked to. And we're going to use those several times this year. This time we're going to use them with what's called a Spectro Vis Plus, which is going to give us a wide range of wavelengths for you to see different material and how they act. So when you follow the directions, one of the first things that it says is we're going to calibrate with some water. This is a cuvette. It fits in a couple of different kinds of material, and, and the reality is it's liquid, and we're going to set that little cuvette inside this opening so that the clear side, the one without ridges, one without ridges, one has ridges, one doesn't, clear side we want the light to travel through. You can see a little arrow on one side, a light indicator on the other. When we calibrate, you're going to pull down that from experimental menu and down here somewhere. You're going to find calibrate. You're going to choose that. If you go off it, it'll try to go somewhere else. I want to choose spectrophotometer one. And you have to wait a little while. Be patient. When it comes up, it'll say we've got some time to warm up because the light needs to warm up. And it always recognizes that for you. I'm going to skip that warm up. You don't want to. I'm going to skip that warm up so we can just see what happens. It'll say fi finish calibration, and you say yes because the water is in there. And in a little bit, it'll prompt you for something next. So you got to let it finish calibrating, and it'll allow you to hit OK. You hit OK. Now it knows what water looks like. What we then want to do is take the water out, set it aside, make sure you keep track of it because this material looks just like water. Again, wipe the clear side with a Kim wipe, so you take away any fingerprints. Put it in so the clear side is going, the light's going through it. You reach up here, find the collect function, and that will allow it to find how that material acts against the lights at all kinds of different wavelengths. When it's done, it'll allow you to pick stop. You take that material out. Put it with that solution, get your next solution, do that same thing, we're ready to collect, we hit collect. It says, you got some choices, but the directions say we want to store latest run, and we do, we want that material, and now we got this material. When you're done, you'll have three graphs within the same graph. A lot of people think they don't have the graph of zinc, but the zinc nitrate is sitting along here on the bottom. So this is the copper. you got to keep track of which one is which. Now that I can choose, choose stop, I choose stop, take that material out, put in the next material. Again, wipe it with a Kim wipe. Put it in so the clear side catches the light. Collect some more data. We want to store latest run one more time. When it's done, it graphs. It allows you to hit stop. You hit stop, now we've got three sets of material. Your directions then give you a few things you got to do. And if you haven't used these, you might not recognize it. But here at the top is, is this A, and that's really auto scale. So when it says hit auto scale, that brings the graphs, the information into perspective so you have it all. It also says double click on the graph so you can give it a title. So you double click on the graph, give it a title about what solutions you put in there. Once you have a title, you're going to want to come over to File, pick File, and when you go down here, not to Print, but to Print Graph. It says that in Directions, Print Graph. Then you can send it to the computer that's up in front, and it will print your graphs. So that's really Part 1. When you get your graph, you're going to have to write on it what the materials are, because it doesn't depict them in, in a, a great way for you. You're going to have to see which graph, for instance, is the copper material, or the iron material, or the zinc material, what, what ions are in there. You have to tell it. All right? Part two, next day, or that day, we're going to get out these bins, which we haven't used yet, and in them are, are a different piece or equipment that you need. So you're going to follow me over here, and I'm just going to talk you through a little of that. This is a colorimeter. It's not a great spectrophotometer because it only has 
several, actually this one only has four different wavelengths you can set it at. There's a calibration button in the middle. If I had water in there, I could hold that down and it would calibrate. When that light's flashing, it calibrates to whatever's in there. So you, <laughs> bless you. You'd push that once and then you'd be ready to calibrate and to run material on there. Several things you gotta get out of the bin. You've gotta get out a wire to hook up the lab pro. You gotta get out a power source to give yourself some power and you gotta get the calorimeter out of this little box. So there's other devices we're gonna use in those bins, but this one hides in there and there are some cuvettes and some caps in there. So those are things you need to be able to run this lab that we haven't used before.